oil pan gasket anyway, but just to keep y'all updated as far as I might put this on YouTube. Yeah, I'll go ahead and put this on YouTube and then I'll just make a little time lapse video. Uh, I have some editing software I downloaded so I can go ahead and download that. I apologize that one smudge is still on the lens. I haven't managed to clean that off yet, but let's uh, transfer our view here. So here we have crankshaft obviously and I got the wrong cylinder top dead center <laughs> I got number one piston up and number two down I need to do it opposite because the customer came to me saying it's making some weird noise we can't figure it out let me get a flashlight in there for y'all and uh, I said they couldn't figure it out and I'm like well let me, I'll take a look at it and Sure enough, it is knocking. And so it's just a bearing. Like, how much is that going to cost? I'm like, if I could find one, like 10 bucks. But sure enough, watch this. A little bit of preventive maintenance, people, goes a long way. But because of where this is at, we should be able, you can see right there, that's where the actual seam is for the connecting rod on the crankshaft to uh, replace that bearing. And I got the new bearing, ordered it from a good old Rock Auto. But, uh, I should be able to just get it right here. I'm going to have to rotate the whole crank and, uh, rotate the whole crank. So, number two is up and number one is down. Or maybe half and half so I can get in there and get it apart. But, looking at everything else, I mean, looks pretty good. Uh, the knock's coming from this side of the engine whenever it's running. I thought it was on the number one cylinder, but... It obviously is number two, but uh, I'll get back to y'all here in a little bit. Okay, guys, just bringing you back real quick to let you know that it is indeed a 14 millimeter or 9 sixteenths if you got, but preferably a 14 to get these nuts off right here. And looking at it a little bit closer, I noticed on this one, this one's already been fucked with. So this is obviously a problem cylinder, which makes me think that there could be warp damage. I don't know, I'll have to do a little bit more digging, but I'd really rather not. I just want to get swapped out and back to the customer. Alright, see you in a bit. Alright, welcome back everybody. Uh, long story short, just took a quick break. So, or not break, break for recording. So I can go grab a wrench from a neighbor, because I don't have nothing this big. But, right there, here's your crank pulley. Which is fully attached to your crankshaft, obviously. And once I can get you on there. There we go. Now if you look right here, the whole issue... See, it's slightly off center now, and then actually rotate it. Yeah, oop, hit myself in the face. Now I can get uh, to that one right there, get that one off, and then I'll rotate it the other way, and then I'll get that one off. And then we have a winner, winner. See you guys in a minute. All right, welcome back, everyone. Long story short, right up there, you can see the connecting rod. I went ahead and took it to top dead center. And then I dropped it down to the bottom. And the way I'm going to do this is the O-rings will keep the piston in the actual cylinder up there. You see that gap. And what that will allow me to do is take this, whatever I did with it. You see my man problem. I seem to have lost the brand new beer. Uh, let's see. Y'all can help me find it. There it is. I'm going to look over a little bit. I really don't even know why they call these bearings, technically. But, uh, let's see if I can position y'all where you can see a little bit. I'm using a uh, GoPro I use for my helmet cam, so I have no kind of viewfinder. But, anyway. Here they are right there. And, you see, I clamp down. Just like that. And that's what fills a little gap but the way I do it is I personally stick them up here like that let me uh, move where y'all can see real quick you can see the edge of it right there and I'm gonna try and do both the camera and the light at the same time and while I'm doing that stick my big old wrench up here Okay, now watch. See how it rotates. And 
and it's going to turn a little bit, which I don't want it to do. So what I'll do is I'll line you up, oh, shit, <laughs> and fuck it all up. There you go, put it right there. Turn it. And you see how it's starting to line up by itself? That's what I like to see. Do you know what that means? I don't have to tear the engine apart. Which makes me a happy camper. Okay. And I lost the bolt. There it is. Okay. Now, hopefully. It's very hard to record just there. Oh. Almost had it. No big. If I can do it from right here. Literally just stick it on the wrong way as far as sticking it on the bottom first. And then I just spin it. I gotta spin it to win it. Get it up in here. Now normally I'm also holding it with my finger, but since I'm recording for y'all, I think it's just slightly more difficult. Yeah. Sorry guys, I won't be able to do this and film it. Sorry. Uh I'll show you that product. Oh, sorry. Uh, Alright, guys, sorry about that. Unfortunately, I can't really show you too well unless you got some eagle eyes. You can see that slight gap in between the connecting rod, uh, bearing sleeve, the bottom part of the connecting rod to the crankshaft. See that slight gap? So basically, what I do is I just stick it on upside down, and then I spin it around to the top of it with my finger, and I hold one side. For example, since I was rotating it, if you follow the light, I was rotating it this way counterclockwise, I was rotating the whole crankshaft counterclockwise, and I left the piston at the top of the head. The reason being, that way I have room, and what I do is I line up the top bearing, uh, stupid flashlight, okay, I lined up the top half of the bearing on the crankshaft on the top side, and then I just rotated it, and then as I rotate it to the very top again, well it's not so very top, it's slightly off center, but you know what I mean, um, I hold it with my finger the other side. So since I'm rotating it counterclockwise, I hold it on the clockwise side and I rotate it clockwise to go against it. And what that does is it allows me to line up both sides of the bearings and once I get it lined up with the actual connecting rod again, I put it on the bottom half and I just stick the bearing on the bottom half, push it up and boom, you see there it is holding in place. Uh, little gober is fixing the die so let me go ahead and get this footage off of here before I lose it. See y'all next time. We have the 2001 Nissan Sentra. Customer was saying there was a bad knocking sound. Went over there to pick it up, and sure enough, the thing sounded like it threw a rod or something. I was paranoid, but it was running pretty smooth, so I went ahead and inspected it a little bit more. Found out it was the rod bearing itself, so went ahead and swapped that out. Walked y'all through that process, and now we're going to start it up.